right? Right. With enthusiasm. With enthusiasm. Yes. And action. That was very enthusiastic. Awesome. <laughs> so today we have more stencils for you. You know, the Patterns for Layering collection and the Dorothy collection, because they were mostly small too, really proved positive about how well you can take little designs and embed them in bigger designs. And that really led us to believe that it would be worth releasing another collection of Patterns for Layering. And that's what we have for you today. Nine designs in the collection that's called Patterns for Layering. Two. Two. Take two. <laughs> let's not, set let's two. continue with this one. 201, yes. <laughs> version two. Yeah, I, um, I, I love, uh, well, I always tell everyone that the success of gel printing, for me at least, is in the layers. So layering multiple patterns, and like Barb said, big ones with small ones, small ones with big ones, and um, translucent and opaque paint. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, and I'm gonna show you how to combine several of these. They combine really well with patterns, um, stencil patterns or masks with large openings, but they also layer awesome with each other. I don't ever want you to forget that gel printing is not your only option ever with stencils and masks. Sprays are really a good option, and I don't want you to forget, if you're a spray person, that the gel plate is another great way to use them. And there are plenty of others. You could put paint, on an ink blending tool and tap, 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 tap. I mean, there's lots of ways to do this. Oh yeah, definitely. All kinds of ways to push color through that stencil. Shall we go do it? Let's go do it. All right, All let's right. go. We wanted to show you the nine stencils in the release that is Patterns for Layering, the second collection. And we could have showed this to you and you can see a little bit of color on here, which makes the design visible. But what we decided to do instead was to spray them with my favorite sparkly dis distress spray stains. So this is named Constellations. This one, almost my favorite, is named Daisies. Almost your favorite. Well, I'm a little bit torn between that and, well, I like Fans a lot, which is the one that you're actually going to use. This one is Florals, and I like this a lot too. It's those kind of round shapes. I did overspray a little bit, because, you know, I am prone to thinking if a little bit is good, then a lot must be better. And more I is sprayed better. a little bit more than I should. This is Happy Hex. Honeycomb, lines. I don't normally like angular things, but I am fascinated by this lines. And when I sprayed this one, it's a little hard to see that, but there's actually three colors along the way here. But when you hold this up to the light, you can see it. So I sprayed vertically to kind of emphasize that vertical pattern. Again, a little bit must be good, so a lot is better. I oversprayed. This is C-shapes. This is really cool. I like this kind of curvy, almost Fibonacci-like spiral that happens. And then this last one is named Stars, and you'll ignore the plate, the fact that I oversprayed a little bit there too. So these are the nine stencils that are in part of the stencils, excuse me, the Patterns for Layering 2 collection. Which one did you say was your favorite? Daisies. Daisies? Follow I thought you said it was your almost favorite. And well, I decided once I paged through them that it was Lines as a second, a, a kind of a distant, not a distant second, but second to Daisies. I like that one better. Let it be documented that Barb hates straight lines, and so do I, and somehow that one came up on top. Yep, it did, or next to the top. You just anyway. never know. You, you never know. <laughs> so I'm really excited about these new patterns for layering set number two. Um, I am going to be combining them in my demonstration with an older stencil of mine that is called Moon Dance. And so I really like to show you that combining, layering smaller patterns with larger patterns creates some incredible gel prints. Because for me, the, the most successful gel prints are all about layering. So Moon Dance offers me some great big openings and some thick lines so that it's going to work well with the smaller patterns. The other thing is that all of these smaller patterns are also great layered with each other. So um, let's see if you put it this way so you can see it. So like multiple layers of smaller patterns themselves, um, they are great for layering over each other. So in this demo, I'm going to use two of these over each other and then one with the larger openings. So you know me, I love to gel print with my stencils. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a light colored solid sheet and that is going to be this sky blue color. And I'm going to be working from light to dark, and I'm also going to be mindful of translucent versus opaque colors. So the base layer is an opaque color. 
but everything else is gonna go on top of it. And Barb is laughing because every time I grab a brayer, it's this squeaky one. Um, so our base layer is an opaque color. Um, that's always a good choice for the bottom layer because if you put it on the top layer, you don't see anything through it. But it's a good place to start on a bottom layer, so. And who uh, doesn't like sky blue, right? Right, yeah, a nice sky blue in the family of teal. So there we go, a nice solid of sky blue. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, is what? Is orange. So this is naphthol red light. So for all intents and purposes, it's orange, Barb. Agreed. As I see you squeeze that out on the plate, it most assuredly is orangey, yes. Orangey. And I'm laying it right in there into the blue. We'll see what happens. Not a whole heck of a lot, really. I mean, it looks like orange. Yeah, the blue is pretty light, so it doesn't seem to matter. So that's what I'm going to do with the uh, first patterns for layering stencil that I'm using, and this is called Happy Hex. Oh, what the hex? Yeah, what the hex? That's what I should have named it. So I'm just going to print that orange over the sky blue. And this is one of those, uh, most of these uh, patterns for layering have small openings. So they're gonna require some pressure from your fingertips. However, you can always start with some pressure from the Baron. Speedbook very cleverly named that the Red Baron. The Red Baron, yeah. yes, it is very clever. So I like it to get a pressure out around the edges especially. And then I'll come in with my fingertips and make sure that I got all those little tiny patterns to oh. connect so look at that so really nice do. yeah so there you go Ooh happy hex over the over the blue so now we're gonna lift that up and we have a nice ghost print there we might as well just print that as our cleanup sheet and potential second print i like to call it the unintended print you know the thing you do with the cleanup and then sometimes it's the best thing you did all day look at that that's quite yeah. nice um this, this could definitely be uh, uh, the beginning of another great print. So, okay. So now the next color I'm going to do is, um, this is a yellow ochre. So I'm going to put that over here. And that is a opaque color. So that's actually going to block out some of my orange. But I think that we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. You don't know until you just mess with this stuff. All right, so now I'm gonna use the um, fans, patterns for layering stencil. We're gonna put that right in there and we're gonna go over the first two layers with that. Gotta get your fingers into all those small openings. We are, in fact, using my favorite pad of sketch rice paper, which is uh, soft and malleable and allows for you to press it down through even the smallest of openings in these stencils. This is definitely uh, superior to copy paper. And since I'm going to use these papers in collage, it is also great to glue down. All right, so now we've got some fun patterns going on there. So now I'm gonna take that off. Let's grab that layer on our cleanup sheet. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, that one's pretty. That is pretty. Now there's still some left on there. Now I've got zinc white. I normally don't like zinc white because it's translucent, but I want it to be translucent in this case because I don't want to do too many opaque layers to block out what's underneath. this one a second time all of these patterns for layering work together with each other um, so another stencil for another layer uh, is always welcome it's all about the layers Barb it's 
all about the layers. It's all about the layers. It's like parfait. Ooh, look at that. So now we got some fun stuff happening. There's still paint in those spaces. So I just gonna, I'm gonna flip that paper and print it the other direction so I can get those uh, fans to sort of multiply in those two different directions. Now I'm gonna take this off. Wow, look at that, that's nice. Yeah, that one is really cool. Actually, I could print that on here too. Let's just do that, see what happens. Yes, look at that. So flipping, the second time I did the fans, you notice I pulled it and I said there's more paint in there. I flipped the paper over, so now I'm pressing it in the opposite direction. So I've got fans going in multiple directions now, and they're sort of blending and mixing with my um, Happy Hex. So the last layer that I'm going to put on is the raw umber. This is transparent. So this is going to darken down everything on here, but you're still gonna be able to see through it. And that's important. This is a completely transparent color. Oh, I hope there's enough in there. Um, and um, so you will see all previous layers through this, but it's darker. So it's going to allow us, and I wanna make sure I clean this opaque color off my brayer. I wanna okay. make sure that that layer is transparent. There was a lot of paint on there. It's a good thing you did. Yeah, there's definitely a decent amount of paint on there. So now we're good. Okay, so I'm going to roll this out. Again. What, don't, what they don't see is the giant bags of paint behind you where we're going to have to go scrabbling around if that's not enough. For yeah, them. no. Luckily, we got enough. We got enough. But I can't stress enough that this layer has to be transparent so that we can see through it like stained glass so that we don't eliminate all of this beautiful layering with our last layer. So it's darker, but it's transparent. Here comes the moon dance. And then we are going to put this beautifully layered paper on top of that dark color. But our big openings in the moon dance. Oh, Barb. Oh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. The big openings in the moon dance are going to give us a lot of opportunity for our layers to show through. And again, that transparent color on the top is giving us layers that show through. Look at that beautiful layering and that complex print. But we've got a little bit left here underneath that. So we're going to grab that cleanup sheet, that unintended print that I've been using. And let's lift this and see what that looks like. Ooh, Ooh just enough. Just enough, just a little bit. But it gives us a little more complexity. It's certainly not as, uh, the same as this one, but it's definitely uh, unique in its own way of layering. It's more of a brown family. So anyway, this is the, a nice example of how your patterns for layering can create complex gel prints and how you can combine them with a uh, mask with larger openings um, to as a last layer to just sort of add some large shapes in with your smalls. So as with any other tutorial that Barb and I do together, we spend several hours uh, beforehand playing around with um, ideas and concepts for what we're going to film. So I wanna show you some of the prints that I made while I was prepping for this video with the patterns for layering. These are patterns for layering combined with an, a Georgia O'Keeffe, one of my Georgia O'Keeffe stencils. This is another one of the Georgia O'Keeffe stencils with patterns uh, under it and on top of it. So we've got the teal on the top and some of the orange layers underneath it. Here's another with the same uh, Georgia O'Keeffe mask and some unique layers of white and other colors underneath. This one is layers of patterns for layering. So this is probably, I don't know, four or five layers of these patterns for layering. And you get this nice, complex, uh, deep, textured print. This is great for collage. Here's another one that is layers of patterns for layering. So it's got some lime green and some pink and some dark color in there. And it's also got my chair caning mask. You see that circle pattern that's underneath oh, that, there? Yes, that big, the circles that are lurking in the background. Yes, the circles that are lurking in the background. So in this one, I put the layers under 
under that circle uh, chair caning mask as well as over it. So it's kind of layered in there. This one is um, the same. It's got the Georgia O'Keeffe mask under it and with patterns for layering over it. So it's definitely layered in there, but you can see that in the light blue and the purples and the dark blues are patterns for layering. Uh, this one is purple and pink, just patterns for layering over themselves on white. And this is another one that uses Moon Dance. This has also got patterns for layering under it and then over the top of the whole print. So you get multiple complex layers of patterns and colors there. This one is another one using Moon Dance. And another one. We had so much fun. We did. And just more unique color combinations with that. That one is so pretty. You do like this one. I You've do, said that yes, before. I... Orange and blue. This is Syracuse University colors. There you go. Go orange. <laughs> <laughs> this one is my, um, what did we say this one was called? Uh, no idea. Okay. We looked it up yesterday. We looked it up yesterday. Yeah, this is an old one, but it is a good one. It's a mask with a lot of... Uh, thicker lines, but also large openings that allow those patterns for layering to show through it, just like Moon Dance. Um, another of the Georgia O'Keeffe. And another of the Georgia O'Keeffe. This one I think is called Music um, with the patterns for layering and lots of kind of interesting color combos. You can really see the stencil or the mask on that one. Yes, this one you can really see the O'Keeffe Music mask and you can really see the layered patterns underneath that one. Here's the chair caning again with fans on top of it. And chair caning again with multiple layers of patterns for layering underneath it. So um, the, the, the most interesting thing about creating all these prints is that you actually can never do the same thing twice. Even I can't achieve the same thing twice. So when I fall in love with one of these prints and I say, this is the one that I'm going to demo, it never comes out exactly the same. All we can hope for is that it comes out good. There you go. <laughs> Elizabeth has shown you how she works and makes complex layers with the patterns for layering in combination with each other or with some of her other original prints and what I'm going to show you today is or what I want you to not forget is that sprays and stencils are really a natural pairing. So I have three colors of Tim's Distress Mica Stains. I have Cocktail Party, Fortune Teller, and Shiny Bar Bauble. So basically I have pink, purple, and turquoise. Doesn't matter how I combine these, they're not going to make mud. So as you always have to do, you want to shake these to get everything up and moving and I'm going to show you a couple of different things. This is lines. I'm going to start with this. And as I mentioned in the prior section, when I showed you the various nine that are part of this collection, I'm gonna very deliberately spray this one vertically to take advantage of that and to really emphasize the vertical nature of this. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take it off to the side and I'm gonna spray it just to keep that nozzle clean. And now what I'm gonna do is bring in, this is cocktail party. Look at that I color. Know, right? And I'm going to lightly spray over the turquoise, and that's going to give me some blending that, when it's dry, Ooh. will, I know, right, will definitely become a purple color. So that's the very obvious thing that you do when you spray. But what I want to show you, and you've seen me do this before, what I want to show you, and by the way, I'm working on black, smooth, and sturdy because the mica stains look awesome on it because, again, black is drama. So this time, I'm going to bring in two tags. Oh, she's going to try to bring in two tags. All right, so what I'm going to do is this time I'm going to, let's make sure I'm in the frame here. I'm going to bring in daisies because, yep, I have admitted that it's my favorite. I hope every, all of the rest of them don't get a complex. <laughs> this time I'm going to spray through the whole thing with just one color. And then what I'm going to do, well, let's get some up here. Now, the thing is, is that I just put lines to the side and it's covered with spray, and I don't like to waste that. Plus, it's an opportunity to do some really fun, creative things. So this is hard to see until it's dry, but that's the, um, and we'll take photos of these. This is daisies that's kind of done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring in another of the black tags. I'm gonna turn this over, and I want to print all that's on there. So I'm gonna lay this down. Now in order for this to be an effective print, I have to make certain that I press 
so that the liquid that's on the opposite side of that stencil transfers to that number 12 black smooth and sturdy tag. So you can see that I've got a little bit of seepage coming through here, but the paper towel is kind of keeping my hands reasonable clean. Now I'm not going to lift this up. I'm going to lift it a little bit so you kind of see what's going on. And what I'm going to do, you know what, I was going to come back with another mica stain, but I think what I'm going to do instead is I like green and pink. I'm going to use an oxide spray. This is Twisted Citron. So I'm going to mist through that, and then I think, because I can, I'm going to bring in peacock feathers, and I'm going to mist through here. And then when I lift this up, I have a pink background. Wow. With purple, excuse me, with green and turquoise flowers. That's fun. And you just need to be willing to keep playing. Now the cool thing is that if I decide I want to, and you can go on and on with this, and eventually you kind of either run out of patience or surfaces, but if I bring in another black tag, I have all of this stuff on here that I can do the same thing with. And so you kind of go around and around and around. Now, when I press this, I'm gonna pick up basically the pink that's left on here. This is the cocktail party mica stain, but I can keep going, and I'm like the Energizer Bunny sometimes when I get going with this. So if I bring in, I have green in, on there. So let's bring in Fortune Teller. I'm gonna use the mica stain and I'm gonna spray through this. And I'm, this is gonna be the last one. I'm not gonna keep going, but I could, because every time I spray through this stencil, I end up with more stuff on the top that I could then go ahead and print. So this is a little harder to see because Ooh. it's purple on the black, but, but when this dries, yeah. It's and gonna... the way it bleeds into the edges of the green and the and the uh, teal. So are you telling me sometimes yeah. overspray is a good thing? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I like it because it gives you that soft painterly look along with the, the crisp ones at the end that are more graphic. So you get like a kind of a combo. I like it. Yeah. And the, we'll, like I said, we'll take photos, but this will become, the oxides will be flat. They'll be matte. But obviously the mica stains will have the whole shimmer thing going for them. Definitely. Okay, so whether you make fabulous gel prints on rice paper with these stencils or you make fabulous spray prints that could be backgrounds, it could be part of a card. I mean, I've, well, these are upside down, but you saw me, saw me spray these in the video. And again, the light reflects, it is so much better when these are dry so that you really get the full effect of the mica stains. You did good. Thanks. Yeah. So we hope you have fun with them. We did. Yeah, we sure did. And we hope you will too. And don't forget, if you have exciting things to share, oh, tag right. us on yeah. social media. All right. Well then, until next time, Bye. see you later. Bye.